this pandemic year has really highlighted very much the importance of information and also the challenges we have with information. And I think we can identify a series of challenges. Um, in places like Spain, <clears throat> where we went into a really hard lockdown at the beginning, and all public officials immediately were working from their homes. And this was not only, I mean, it happened everywhere around the world, you know. Um, we suddenly realized that there's a crisis happening. People are really interested in getting information and we don't have any systems for ensuring that in the moment of crisis, we can carry on processing requests for information. I remember talking to a government official in Canada who said, I'm working from home, but the problem with my security on my computer is that I can't access any of the documents in our archives. So I can't answer requests for information. So we had practical problems like that. And in that context, governments said, well, we have to suspend the administrative timelines. We can't do administrative processes like normal. It could be answering a request for information, or it could be processing someone's application for a driving license or a building permit or a subsidy or whatever the normal timelines are, uh, we're not going to be able to do this. So all timelines were suspended. And in many countries with the emergency decrees suspending the timelines, I'm generalizing here, but to give the broad picture, uh, access to information timelines, which we know are very important, were also suspended. In the meantime, you also had governments giving press conferences, but without any journalists physically present. Eventually, after, and it wasn't immediate, huh? it took two or three weeks normally to figure out, well, we'll have the journalists joining by Zoom and they can actually ask questions. And so it took us a little bit of time to get ourselves organized in our information system in the, in the middle of the, the pandemic lockdowns. Um, and what we realized there were various things. We realized we don't have the digital system set up to make information easy to gather and share. So governments, and I could, this happened in Germany even, in Germany, collecting data on infections from around the country and passing it to the center so it could be given in daily press briefings wasn't easy at first because the systems weren't set up. And that's in Germany. So you can imagine the number of countries that were struggling that public officials were struggling to have process requests because they couldn't access the archives. Journalists were wanting to ask information but weren't able physically to contact public officials and public officials aren't in their offices, they're working from home. How do you get their attention? Everyone's in crisis mode. Um, governments are trying to get information from other government departments and it's not digitalized and harmonized. And, in, a, in the space of a, it seems long now, but it was in the space of a very few weeks, we saw a huge number of problems with information, with the creation, collection, uh, sharing inside government, and then sharing with the public of information. I have to say that that seems like quite a long time ago now, in December 2020. Governments have got better organized. Uh, those of us who like, trying to follow what's going on on a daily basis. We can go to multiple websites. The European Center for Disease Control has updated every day all the data from every country, and it's pretty reliable, not perfect, but you know, it's pretty good. Um, the number of tests carried out, the number of hospitalizations, etc. So looking back on the year, uh, a huge amount has been done to improve with relation to the pandemic and then I'll come to other things like public procurement but with relation to the pandemic we had to quickly get organized but I think generally it was done on access to information and our right as citizens to have information what was really interesting to see was that in countries where information is considered to be a fundamental right it was easier to defend the obligation of governments to continue processing requests for information. So in countries like Argentina and Chile, uh, even though the government initially suspended access to information processes, 
the information commissioners were able to say, no, 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 this is a fundamental right. You have to carry on processing and answering requests. You can prioritize requests related to the pandemic, but you have to keep trying to process them. I can't remember actually what happened in Poland off the top of my head. Uh, you're on Sorry. mute. Yes, I'm muted. Uh, in our case, it was, um, <laughs> this was actually pretty complicated because there was no suspension, but there mm -hmm. was suspension of um, terms in the courts, which was interpreted as suspension of terms. We didn't get many answers, uh, especially referring to the spending, because in Poland, this was huge everywhere, but it was huge everywhere. opportunity for spending. And it's still the same for decision making without oversight. So and yes. it was on all levels. It was like journalists were calling us saying that they can local journalists, that they cannot attend meetings of the um, city councils or that those who are in the opposition are because it probably works like that, that local journalists present during the proceedings support the minor uh, opposition that is in the in several cities. So it's kind of, uh, it shouldn't be because of course the, the press is independent, but somehow the opposition feels supported by the press uh, when different decisions are taken. I think that what you described there in Poland is really typical of lots of countries. And it's not that the press actually supports the minorities like that in an impartial way, but the presence of journalists, the presence of people monitoring makes people behave differently. Mm -hmm. And it is a control. That's why that's, it's, a, it's a beautiful local example of why we do transparency, why we do open government. Because if you have to do things transparently, you're going to behave differently. And it makes it harder to be corrupt. And everywhere we saw... Uh, governments using emergency procurement procedures, desperate to try to get things done, contacting people they knew, uh, and a lot of money was misspent, and we will still have to evaluate how much that was just bad management and how much it was corruption in some countries. Um, but there was a lack of transparency around the decision-making and the emergency public procurement uh, and the spending of funds, and that has been a problem during this pandemic year. Uh, that's on the negative side of the kind of problems that we've seen when you remove the public scrutiny uh, and you make it harder for journalists to do their job. Uh, but there, of course, we also see the, the digital divide. If we're talking about information, how does information get to everyone? Those of us who are fortunate enough to have our computers and access to the internet, uh, but not everybody all around Europe has the same level of bandwidth, of internet access, of everyone in the house having their own computer. That's a luxury. It's a huge luxury. So uh, making sure that everyone can have access to information in this pandemic time has also been a challenge. Um, that's something that I've seen, for example, in Spain, in our Open Government Action Plan, there's now a commitment to increase bandwidth all around the country. And I know that that's being talked about in France as well. So making sure people have got access to information. For me, in terms of the public in general, the most interesting thing is that for years we've been saying that there's the timeframes are so radically different between, if you go to Google, well, not yesterday because Google was down yesterday, but generally if you go to Google, before you finish typing in your question, the answer is popping up on the screen, right? You go to governments, you send your question, you wait five days for an acknowledgement, then you wait more, then you send them a reminder because the deadline's coming, then you maybe get an answer. So we've got this radical difference between information that's easily accessible and the difficulties in terms of time of getting information from governments. I do think that during the pandemic, the demand to have information rapidly, daily, hourly, is something that governments have, at least within the Open Government Partnership, we've talked a lot about this, the need to digitalize government more so information can be provided to the public more rapidly. 
because we realized how slow government is and how inefficient they can be at providing us. And we're the bosses. You know, when your boss comes to you and asks you to do something, you do it. It should be the same when we ask uh, government for information. And our 20 or 30 day time frames shouldn't be the norm. They should be the absolute maximum. So I think the pandemic helped us realize those kinds of problems. Uh, it, it helped us realize the problems with ha not having company registers open. And we had, you know, you had Europol chasing fake companies that were registered in the Netherlands, in Germany, in Gibraltar, in fake companies that had, the German government, I believe, was defrauded by some fake companies which claimed to be selling personal protective equipment. And Europol had to investigate and found this company didn't really even exist. So lack of open company registers so we can know uh, who's trying to cheat our governments out of money, even when it's not deliberate corruption. Uh, it became clearer to us during this year the kind of information that's really important. We also have perhaps an idea of what crises can look like. And we've got in the future, not, I mean, hopefully this pandemic will not last too long, but then we have the climate crisis. And I do think that one thing that's going to be very important from this pandemic year is learning lessons about how to make sure that we use information well to manage a crisis uh, in order that everyone can participate and understand the decisions, tough decisions sometimes, that we need to take. I think the beautiful thing about the pandemic has been that once we were informed about the virus, People are not stupid. Governments often patronize ordinary people, but people are not stupid. People can understand, most people at least, there's some people who think the virus is all made up and I don't know, but most people, the vast majority of people understand this is serious, this is a virus, vulnerable people are dying. We need to take do the right thing. We need to wear our face masks in public. We need to stay at home. We need to reduce our social contacts. And people are complying with the rules, largely, because they have the information and it's being explained to them. And we understand this is not ideal. It's not ideal for all the people whose jobs have been affected. Uh, it's not ideal for no one can travel. We can't see our loved ones. We can't have our holidays. But we understand why we need to do it, because there is societally a greater good at stake because we're informed. Now, as we move towards an increasingly serious climate crisis, we're going to need to do the same things. We're going to need to make sacrifices, but we need to understand, are these the sacrifices that I really need to make in order to protect the planet? Um, and good information, and also the scientists are back. I love this. Let's bring the scientists back. Let's listen to experts, not only politicians. Uh, let's, let's have clarity. And here we've had a problem this year, actually. I was just talking today to a law professor in, in Italy about a court case in Italy to get information about who are the people advising the government? Who are the scientific advisors, you know? Um, so we need, we need to know who are the scientists giving the information? What information are they giving? How is the government deciding to act or not on that information? but it's all about information and about the public in general being empowered with information. 